Welcome to the Kingdom Podcast, featuring Commissioner Christine King, where all voices are heard. Welcome back to the latest episode of the Kingdom Podcast, where all voices are heard. I am Christine King, Chairwoman of the City of Miami Commission and Commissioner for District 5 in the lovely city of Miami. We are here today in the historic Lyric Theater in Overtown, a neighborhood in my district. I am joined today by two fantastic women. We are celebrating International Women's Month, and what better than to showcase two beautiful women doing wonderful things in the community and owners of their own business. May I introduce you to Fiola Nikas. I had to look because I want to make sure (laughs) that I'm saying her name right. And Camille Rowan. Both are entrepreneurs, both own their own business, and both are doing fabulous things. Ladies, welcome to the Kingdom Podcast. Thank you for having us. Thank you. So, Fiola has a business located right here in the historic Overtown community. I'm going to ask her to tell us all about your fantastic shop, of which I am a patron. Thank you. Well, Eben, our our boutique is going on its fifth year in Overtown. Um, My brand is celebrating 25 years this year. Congratulations. Thank you. I launched the brand before all the fancy terms of plant-based, organic, before there were certifications and all those things. When I first talked about launching the products, um, I was told that I was crazy. That, you know, making natural hair products for women of color or women with natural hair was a waste of time because... um, the price point that these products would require, folks will not pay for it, which was very insulting to me because I'm a woman of color with natural hair. And, you know, whenever I would go to all the natural stores back, this is when I was a teenager, okay? We're going way back. (laughs) There were no products of quality. Everything was petroleum, paraffin wax, um, you know, mineral oil. They add a little color to it and fragrance, and it's like, here's your hair product. And I didn't want that. I wanted something of quality, something that, you know, we have the term plant-based now. But I just wanted something that was natural, something that came from the earth, went into a jar that I can apply to my hair and my skin and not have to worry about it. So I came up with my own little formulas, and I was mixing them, not even thinking that it was going to go anywhere, and then it turned into a business. That's fantastic. That, that is how born out of need, and I can, I can attest to that, because when I was a child, and what's amazing about this show, we all have natural hair, yes, and we all have different textures. I exactly. think I'm, what, a 3, you like three, a three B? A, three B. Three B? Yeah. Camille is a... I actually have two textures, because sometimes, you know, everyone's hair is different. No curl is really the same. It's right. just kind of like a, you know, what are you closest to kind of thing. Um, for me, my hairline is more so a 4C, but in the middle and the back is like a 4B. Me, I have five textures. I don't even try to understand them. <laughs> and then, it's like, this side of my hair grows looser than that side of my hair and here's I mean it's just I have five different textures and sometimes that's due to your ponytails too it stretches your hair a lot so that's why it's looser in the front too so for me when I was a child my hair product was ultra sheen oh wow Mm. that's that's what that's That's, what was there and we didn't have my curls were so tight my hair would be out to here it was always dry I cried every time my mother tried to comb my hair. But now we have so many products to make styling our hair, whatever our hair looks like, much easier. Manageable. Mm -hmm. Much easier. And that's that's what I I came to find out because I was working as a model in the 90s. And when I decided to go natural, 
Like I said, a lot of products in the market were petroleum based. And what people don't realize is that the products that are made for us are conditioning us to later on go into the relaxing process. Like you said, you look at your hair right now, it's very loose because you're using natural products. What I found back then is that the petroleum makes your hair tighter, mm. drier, mm. and coarser. And this thing that turned into this brand, I remember when my mom would comb my hair as a little girl in Haiti. I would think to myself, she's washing my hair, it's soft. She's conditioning my hair, it's soft. It's easy to detangle. The moment she styles it with whatever is in that jar, my hair becomes a whole different texture. And I remember having that thought process as a child. And then, you know, once I became an adult, I started to look into it. And the product supported what I thought all along. Once I started using natural ingredients on my hair, my hair texture went back to what it was mm -hmm. as a child. And I'm very much against petroleum. I know a lot of the products on the market are made with it because it's cheap and it's easy and it's accessible. But it's the worst thing that you can use on your hair because eventually it weakens the hair. It's like, imagine that you're putting a barrier on your skin to keep moisture from touching it right mm -hmm. that's what petroleum is used on a diaper mm -hmm. and you're putting that on your hair it's going to put a barrier on your hair mm -hmm. and stop moisture from coming in as well mm -hmm. and it leaves a, a film and a buildup that stays on there forever and then sometimes people press their hair with that petroleum so they bake it into the hair strands mm -hmm. which creates all the problems that we have within our community and it all starts well. with that when I, camp when I was campaigning, I didn't wear my natural hair. I, I didn't have curly hair because I took this amazing picture and I didn't realize that I was going to be stuck with that look. The picture wound up on all of my campaign signs right. and my mailers. Everything has this beautiful picture of me with straight hair. The woman sitting next to you, was responsible for that hair. She styled my hair through my entire campaign, but she went through pains to make sure that my hair was still healthy. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a relaxer. It was just blow drying, silk press. blow drying and silk press. Camille, talk a little bit about what we had to go through to keep my hair healthy. With the humidity too. With the humidity. <laughs> yeah, um, well, we made sure to use the right products. That's very important because moisture is really what our hair needs more than anything. If there's no moisture in it, it's just not going to <laughs> do what you need it to do. You know, so um, I'm very big on treatments and trims. So beyond just using the right products, you have to have the right techniques and you have to be doing the proper maintenance. You also have a product line, correct? Yes, yes. Tell us a little bit about the products that you've created. Okay, um, CNR Beauty, um, I've started that brand um it's gonna be about six years now um i started making my own oil at home for myself because i went natural because i was tired of the relaxers the the burning of the scalp and all that stuff so i was like okay i want to start my healthy hair care journey and i started using products that were supposed to be more natural and i started to make my own oils do my own mixes and things like that and i realized wow it works really well if it works for me maybe it'll work for other people so i started to like bottle the oil for other people and um they're like girl this works and i'm like okay maybe i got something going on here so um fast forward um i went to my cosmetology school i graduated and um i was just trying to figure out okay one of my goals is to have a full line of my own, um, a full hair care line that anybody can use, any texture, and it just covers all the bases. And I'm like, what am I waiting for? So I started to like save up and do, you know, my research for like months, trying to figure out, okay, what manufacturer am I gonna use? What products am I gonna use? Testing the products, making sure that they work with my hair type and other people's hair type, because I was able to use them on my clients since I had my license and I was in a salon. So I got to see, okay, wow, this works for a majority of people. Um, so then I finally launched my, my hair care line after I launched my oil. Um, my hair care line came out maybe a good six months after that. And 
pretty much been using that on my clients and myself ever since. And that's pretty much how I got my hair to be so full and long. Like, really, no matter, it's crazy with curly hair how much shrinkage works. Like, no matter how the long the shrinkage my hair is, is real. It's it is. The real. Sh- the, the shrinkage, well, right now, my hair, my hair is still damp. Today mm-hmm. was wash day. Mm-hmm. And it's, when I started, it was, my mm-hmm. hair is back length, right? bra strap length mm-hmm. I think Camille says by the time it dries it will be here pull but, on one of the curls show them where but, but I where love it, goes, it. I love it I'm not pulling on my curls because I don't want to <laughs> pull it out but I use Camille's product line I have some of your stuff to use as well she has a curl potion that I use and I put it in my hair it's very light she mm-hmm. has um leave-in mm-hmm. leave-in conditioner the oil and almost everyone in my family uses the oil nana uses the oil she swears by it and but i think it's amazing that the two of you are offering products mm-hmm. for the natural hair community and that you own your own business mm-hmm. what would you say was your biggest challenge opening your business well 25 years ago that the only brand that was out on the market besides myself was carol's daughter Mm -hmm. and um and if carol's daughter had worked for me then a ben would have never been i think we each have our ideas and needs and you know we each have products that that work for us The, the thing with carol's daughter is the majority of their products are beeswax based and i don't like the way beeswax feels um so I had a couple of friends were like, hey, try this. And then I was looking at a texture. It was so similar to petroleum, which is something that I didn't care for. And that's what pushed me into doing my own. Um, I, I guess the hardest thing would have been, um, I have to tell you, once I have something in my head, I can't think of a hardest thing. Because once I decide I'm going to do something, um, all type of obstacles and things can come in their way and I don't even see them, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which can be good and bad. Um, Yeah. I've had, I mean, I guess if I was to look at the hardest time is when I decided to um, get a divorce and all of a sudden I did not have that person in the house to watch after the kids as I traveled and things for business. Mm-hmm. So I had to, when I filed for divorce, I had to scale back quite mm-hmm. a bit because mm-hmm. my, my kids, you know, were very small. My son was two and a half. My daughter had just turned six. And taking them all over the place with me became a challenge. And I made the decision that I would pivot and become mom more than businesswoman, which was probably not the smartest business decision. But looking back on it, you cannot get those years back. And I don't regret. And it was the smartest mom decision. It was was the smartest smartest mom mom decision. decision. Mm -hmm. And at the time, um, our products were at Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. And um, I let them sell the products. And I focused on the kids. And I just was mom. Mm -hmm. And then when my son became about 16, I said to him, because he's the youngest, I said, your sister's in college. You're about to graduate from high school. I've always told you guys when you were little that there will be a time that I will be picking my life back up. Now's the time. Mm -hmm. And so I came and I opened, I signed my lease and opened my store in Overtown. And he was in in high school at the time. And I said to him, you're going to have to start really focusing on your future because mom is going to start doing her now. Doesn't mean that I'm going to leave you behind. Right. But. I and now sacrifice. he works in the shop. He does. Because I met him. <laughs> I met him when I came in to get some products. I met your son, and he was yeah. like, I think this will work for you. I think this will be good for your hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Camille, because you're the youngest of us, uh, you have a sh- salon in Lighthouse Point. Mm-hmm. You also manufacture wigs. You make amazing wigs. Oh, that's cool. You know, anytime you see my hair straight now, it's her wig. Cool. She styled it in the way that has taken that I took that picture. So if for some reason I need to look like my picture again, I just put the wig on. That's I awesome. have not put heat in my hair since I got elected. 
right? I, we stopped. Mm-hmm. And I had heat damage. We cut, we cut. You know, we didn't do a big chop, so we would cut, we would cut, we would cut. And now I have no straight pieces, no straight pieces. I did kind of learn how to style my own hair, the curly style, through YouTube University. <laughs> I love YouTube University, and I, I got so many ideas. In transitioning back to my naturally curly hair, I learned how to use flexi rods. So you'll see pictures of my hair with the flexi rod curls. I've learned how to roll my hair with the traditional rollers. But for the most part, Camille is the one who really got me through that journey of campaigning with straight hair in the summer, in, the in that heat, that humidity. And I didn't have a tremendous amount of heat damage. But Camille, what would you say were your biggest challenge? Because I, I really took the journey of her moving from having a booth in someone else's salon to opening her salon. So I traversed that journey with her. What would you say were your biggest obstacles and your greatest achievements and how do you feel about owning your own business now um I feel like younger me would be like super proud to see who I am today just like what I've accomplished because 2010 graduating high school Camille did not know (laughs) where to even begin she knew what she wanted to do but she didn't know how to get there I wanted to go to cosmetology school. Didn't know how I was going to do that. I went to go and inquire about schools. They said $20,000. I said, who is going to pay that? Because I'm in your mind as a kid, you're like, I don't have that kind of money. Like, loans are not really a thing in your mind. So I ended up going through the motions. I had school and stuff. I went to college. I got my AA. And it turned out that I was going through the motions and working all these different jobs thinking I was going to save and it didn't work out that way just so that I can learn some things, end up winning a full scholarship to the school that I wanted to go to in the first place. Look at God. Look at God. (laughs) It's all about timing, right? And And, and asking, putting it in the universe that this is what I want to mm -hmm, do. Yep. And then it manifests. Mm -hmm. Look at God. I didn't have to pay. Had I would have went and did the loans and all that other stuff, I wouldn't have probably wouldn't be where I am today, right? So from there, I started in my first salon. Um, I went on one interview, I got hired there, and I was like, okay, well, great. So let me get started with, you know, everything. Um, I passed my test on the first go. I started off as a um, assistant, and then I worked my way to booth. And then I was um, doing commission, and then from commission, I paid booth rent. And then from booth rent, everything pre-COVID was great. I feel like I was, you know, doing well, thriving, Mm -hmm. and then COVID happened, and I was like, whoa, (laughs) it's like a big wake-up call for a business owner, someone who's trying to do something for themselves, not just, like, clocking in somewhere. It's a whole nother challenge. So I stepped out on faith, and I was like, okay, I'm going to go out on my own, and I ended up opening my own salon suite. I mean, it's not a big salon, but I have my own space and I get to start somewhere, you know? Humble beginnings matter. So um, it's a challenge even now try, since COVID, but I my goal is to not give up. I have goals, I have dreams, I have places that I wanna be, rooms I wanna get into, things I wanna do. So it's like, I can't afford to just, you know, be scared or... But you have an amazing clientele, right? I do. You have yeah. the first woman to chair the City of Miami Commission. I do. You have, a prof- <laughs> you have professional athletes. Mm-hmm. You do amazing braids. You have, I hope she doesn't mind that I say it, you have a young lady that was... Olympian. She qualified to be on the Olympic team Mm -hmm. in the summer, but then the pandemic hit. You have some amazing women who are related to music royalty. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can say their names or not, so I won't, (laughs) but they are amazing. Mm -hmm. So you have a vast clientele and you, you specialize in natural hair, but you also do. I do everything. I, um, I sell hair, CNR extensions, I um, do extension styles, I make wigs with my sewing machine, I take, I do continuing education, so I'm always learning something new, Um, I do relaxers still, um, the proper way, 
because that's very important. Um, I do braids, all types of braids. Um, and you locks. You do men and women. Men correct? and women, you, yeah. You, that, no discrimination. The only thing is as of lately, I, I fell back on doing the kids because after a while you just can't keep up with them. <laughs> I just can't. But I do pretty much everything but faux locks, um, lock extensions, and no micros, please. <laughs> Just time consuming. Every when you're doing hair and you're styling hair, as you practice and you try new things on different people, you realize what works for you, time wise, mm -hmm. versus price wise, versus how it comes out in the end. And just certain styles, I just stay away from. And I try to stick to what I know and what works for me and what my clients love. But I do pretty much everything. There's I That's pride awesome. myself in being versatile because I hate telling my clients no because then they go to someone else who messes up their hair, then they have to come back to me, and then I have to fix it. So I'd prefer to know at, at least offer 80 to 90% of services and the things that I don't do, you, you on your own. <laughs> so but. do you both have an online presence? Like for any of our listeners or the, the persons that are tuning in to our YouTube channel that can also watch our podcast because it's podcasts are usually just people are listening. Right. But here you have the, the option to either listen to us through any of the podcast platforms or you can watch us on YouTube. Do you have an online, say if someone in New York is listening to our podcast or watching it, could they get your products online? They can get the products on our website. They can also get them on Amazon. What's your website? It's uh, E-B-E-N-E, -E, and then the word naturals with an S, dot com. And when they go to Amazon, they just type in E-B-E-N-E -E hair care, and then they'll see our page, and they can see all the products that we have available on Amazon. Fantastic. And Camille? Um, mine's is C as in cat, and as in Nancy, R as in romance, <laughs> beauty, dot net. And you'll be able to get everything. I have supplies, um, products, um, for your hair, um, I have lash and brow growth oil. Um, I have just about everything that you need, so you can check it out online. And and do you guys have uh, a YouTube page or Instagram? Yeah, I've been on YouTube. So can if because I want everyone to be able to once they see this or listen to our podcast to be able to go and find you if they're interested in having natural products. products. For example, you didn't tell the story that your daughter has eczema and needed these products. Well, that Ga yes, Gabby was diagnosed with eczema when she was about three months old. And that's how the baby line and the skincare products came to be. Because originally I was just making hair care products. And I didn't know what was wrong with her because I've never seen, even though I have eczema, I lived in Florida most of my time, so it doesn't really flare up the way it does living in Dallas, Texas, you know, that's mm -hmm. where we were at the time. Oops, I keep on hitting the mic. Um, and um, it started out as a little thing on her arm and it just took over her whole body, it was all over her face, down to her toes. Took her to the emergency room and the doctor was like, well, she has eczema and I'm gonna make a prescription for a steroid cream. And I was like, who's gonna put a steroid cream on a three month old baby, not me. And my now ex-husband was just furious because I wanted to do natural. Mm -hmm. And him, he was like, you're crazy. Just do what the doctor tells you. Well, he goes to work and I stay home with the baby. So <laughs> I just mixed little baby products for her. Her skin cleared up within a week. I threw everything out. So when I see all these lawsuits now with talcum, baby powder issues, my kids never had that because I made every baby product that you could think of. The moment she was diagnosed, I just threw everything out. Um, and we also make candles. We make everything for someone who's looking for a plant-based lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why I stick to that is because cancer is very prominent in my family. And I figured this is the one thing that I can control. Um, you know, we have all types of cancers in my family. Um, I have several relatives with cancer right now. And... It, so that's why I eat the way I do, uh -huh. I exercise the way I do, and I use what I do. Um, and yeah, that's, that's how I started. And talking about COVID, 
had just opened the store when COVID happened. So imagine you have clients coming in and all of a sudden everyone's scared to leave their house. Right. So that's when we put everything on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And I went to cosmetology school around that time, which because there was nothing else to do. And back then, they weren't even letting people in the classroom. We had to do everything virtually for the longest time. I'm happy to hear you do braids and everything, so I'll refer mm -hmm. folks to you because I <laughs> don't have the patience for that. I specialize more in teaching people how to care for natural hair in the sense where um, if they want to do their wash and go twist outs and things like that. Mm -hmm. We don't offer salon services at the time, at this time anyway. But um, yeah, I, the, the braiding and everything else, I, I would get your card. Mm -hmm. I've been referring people for the past 25 years to different salons and oh, things okay. to get their hair okay. done. Because, you know, that's that's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I have customers who want those micro braids, and those things take, you know, a um, couple of days. Don't, don't send them to me. No micros for me. Well, you know, Camille, it's just a lot of work. I do have a YouTube, though. But you also have a very time. big Instagram, so people could see the different hairstyles mm -hmm. that you yeah. specialize in. What's your Instagram handle? Um, my Instagram is Camille Roan Hair Care, C-A-M as in man, I-L-L-E. R H O N as in Nancy E, hair care. And um, also, it's just Camille Roan on my YouTube where I do talk on my products um, and I show um, basically how I use the products so that people can see. Um, so I showcase that there on YouTube. And then my Instagram, I have a few Instagrams because it's kind of, everybody wants to focus on certain things when it comes to hair so I like to separate them so the naturals go to CNR Beauty Ofish so it's just O F I C after CNR Beauty for just products hair care products all the natural products just products and supplies and Camille Roan hair care is about the styling of the hair so the different styles that I do in my salon CNR Beauty Salon um, I also have a backup page because Everybody has to have a backup page these days with social media because people yeah. hack your page every two they seconds. They hacked my page. They hacked oh mine. My so I lost everything. I can't even get yeah. my name really? back. So I went oh, yeah. from CNR Beauty Salon to CNR Beauty Salons with an S on it because I couldn't get my name back because they hacked my account. It took so me a year. So that's my backup. Yep. It took me a year to and get my name back. Then it's just Camille Rowan hair care for the styling. So now we are coming to a portion of the podcast where I ask you... What's your favorite book of all time? What is your favorite book? For me, it's The Picture of Dorian Gray. Okay. Okay, Camille? Uh, favorite book. Huh, okay. I've never actually been asked that because I write, but um, never thought of what my favorite book would be. I actually started reading this series when I was in high school called Drama High. And it was so amazing because she's actually, um, her grandmother and her grandmother's best friend has their own hair salon, and they do with just natural products. And, you know, they talk about styling the hair and this and just things that I talk about with my clients. So I just, I think it's really cool how full circle it kind of comes when you're reading about that stuff and you get excited and to be actually living that. So I think that's my favorite book. And it's a series of, like, 15 books. Okay. So. What would be your favorite song or theme song? Do you have a theme song? Um, yes. When I won my scholarship, um, Rihanna's work was playing. Work, 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 work. <laughs> so every time that song comes, I don't care what I'm doing. I have to stop what I'm doing and do a little dance because that is my theme song. <laughs> okay. Viola, do you have a, a favorite song or a theme song? I have a song that I call my anthem. And if you were to look it up on YouTube, it's T H E, um, and it's with Will I Am, um, Rihanna, and Mick Jagger, and it's called Harder, the Harder T H E Harder. Okay. And I really like the lyrics. And when I sometimes um, I watch the video, and it just reminds me of. Like the question you asked a little ago, a little while ago, you know, what challenges? Because in that video, no matter what comes at him, he goes above it and he just keeps on moving. And mm -hmm. I think that's what life of an entrepreneur is like. 
And um, so my friends, they know that's, that's my anthem. Okay. When I really want to focus, I just mm-hmm. put it on and I put it on, you know, repeat. I'm going to listen plays. to that. I don't think yeah. I've heard that song. I'm you should watch the out. video. It's pretty incredible because he starts out riding a bicycle and then he owns a spaceship oh. because he just kept on focusing uh-huh. on where he was going. Uh-huh. Yeah. So if you could have dinner with anyone, living or dead, Ooh, who my would, dad. Your father? Yeah, I'm going to make me start crying now. Oh, yeah. oh no. <clears throat> Okay. Mm-hmm. Camille? Um, <sighs> living or dead? Uh, living or dead? Um, can I do both? <laughs> dead Bob Marley. Living Queen Latifah. Mm. You lost your father? Yeah. Yeah. My person I picked would be my grandmother, my mother's mother. I, she died before I became a whole person. So, you know, she was there when I was born, and my mother said she just adored me. But I would love, love, love an opportunity to sit down and speak to her and learn from her. My grandmother is Arawak Indian, and she was born on the reservation, the Wakapau Reservation. And I know there would be just a wealth of stories, information, information that she would give mm-hmm. me. So I understand, because when I said it, 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 it brought me to tears that um, I would just love to sit down. My and, dad and used to take me to the vitamin shops when I was a kid. Did he? And that's why I became so fascinated by all of this. And he passed away. A year after I launched a brand. So I guess he got to see our first features in the mm-hmm. magazines and mm-hmm. the newspapers. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I sent that to him. And he and I were so different from the rest of the family. <laughs> well, there's you something know? special about dads and their daughters. Because he took me to that vitamin shop every weekend. And we would sit there for hours and study every vitamin and what their benefits were. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when I got my contract, with you know the modeling agencies around the world not to say i didn't go to any parties i did go to a few parties and i got to meet celebrities or whatever um but the majority of the time i was in the library Mm -hmm. reading about all those ingredients reading about all those vitamins because Mm -hmm. that's what he and i would do Mm -hmm. i never thought that i would apply it into a business someday i was collecting all that knowledge for myself Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of his books, and I'm looking at them now, and it's so funny because it's like all this stuff he was reading back in the 80s and 90s. And, you know, and he passed away. He had colon cancer. Mm -hmm. He lived with it for a little while. But um, he was, you know, I don't even know how to explain it. My, My father never lived in the box. You well, know? that's good. Yeah. Most, most fantastic people don't. And I have yet to meet someone as educated as he is. Yes. To have, um, to come from a life where he lost his mom at 14 mm-hmm. and his father did not recognize him until he read about him in the paper winning worldwide scholarships. Mm-hmm. So the last name Nikes that I have now wasn't even his when he was growing up. Mm-hmm. He had Etienne, which is, was his mom's okay. um, last name. So... When his father um, read about this kid getting this worldwide, you know, scholarship, he was like, oh, that's my son. I want you to have my last name. And that's when he gave it to him or whatever. And he wanted my dad to go to medical school. Like, you know, parents, Haitian parents have a way of telling their kids what they want to study. Doctors or attorneys. (laughs) Yeah. So my dad went to med school. And then when he graduated, he gave his dad the um, diploma. He said, this is for you. Now I'm going to study what I want. So he studied engineering and law and agronomy. So my father held four wow, diplomas. Sounds amazing. It was extremely smart. My dad learned how to speak English by memorizing the Webster Dictionary. Yes. Wow. So imagine, I'm in high school and I'm lazy. I'm like, Dad, I'm doing my vocabulary words. What is this word? He knew the dictionary definition for every single word wow and when you grow up around someone like that mm-hmm. it's so hard to be impressed by anyone you right know? that that is true that yeah that's true so next question what is the most dangerous thing you do camille the most dangerous thing i do 
in my business. No, just in life. Oh, just in just period. Huh, that was dangerous. I I don't like to I on the wild side a little bit, but not like that. Nothing dangerous really. Um Hmm. Dangerous. I can't even think of anything because I'm like I like I like my limbs okay. and my skin on me. Viola. <laughs> I mean it's not anything I do now. It's stuff I did as a as a teenager. And I look at it now and I think I had a lot of protection around me. What climb trees? <laughs> I used to try to climb things really high. I climbed um the the baseball, the little gate behind the baseball thing, mm-hmm. and I fell. That's the most dangerous thing I've ever done. As a kid, though. Very reckless as a kid. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I think coming here from a very small country where your idea of the world are very sheltered, you don't really see the possibilities for danger. And... When I was modeling, I did some stuff that I really could have ended up disappearing in a body bag or something. And what I mean by that is, um, like, I'm going to give you an an example. And I was very lucky that I was surrounded by people that saw how, they call me green. They were like, oh, she's so green. They saw how green that I was, so they became very protective of me. But imagine you're an 18-year-old girl, you go out with four guys, you get drunk, and you all end up sleeping on the same bed. That's crazy. That's dangerous. That is dangerous. <laughs> that, that would be the definition of dangerous. Very dangerous. De- and, and, and you I live to tell about very, it. Very, very fortunate that they all were so protective of me. I don't think something like that in this day and age would end up like that. Yes. Because yes. I went out with Basile, Jason, um, Tony, Aaron. We were all modeling at the same time. And I never drank before. Mm-hmm. So I didn't even know the drinks. Mm-hmm. They were like, fella, have a Long Island iced tea. I drank it like water. Have a fuzzy navel. I drank it like water. Because it was just, you, you, the alcohol hit me so hard. Mm-hmm. Well, that was a lot of alcohol. Yes. <laughs> but I didn't know. <laughs> and then they were such gentlemen. We took a cab back to my place. They tucked me in. And I had one sleeping at my feet, one on my left, one on my right, the other one in the living room. I woke up the next day fully clothed with them around me Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. was dangerous yes okay (laughs) next next question and last question um if you could tell your younger self if you could give your younger self some advice what would it be the thing is if you were to change anything it would change the course of where you are today right When I was modeling, I had landed a really huge $100,000 contract. Whether I worked or not, the money was guaranteed. And at the same time, my father was diagnosed with cancer. So part of me sometimes says, you should have gone after the contract. But my father needed me. So it's like... Family first. Family first. So I let go of the contract, which made everybody lose their marbles because that's a lot of money for a girl of 19 years old. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, sometimes I thought to myself, how would my life would have been different if I had taken that contract and went to Johannesburg and worked for those few months? And then I think to myself, I probably would have come back to go to a funeral, Mm. you know? So, and then same with my ex-husband. Part of me sometimes thinks to myself, when I saw the first red flags, I should have gotten divorced. But then I wouldn't have my two children, and I wouldn't have this company that I had to make products for them. So it's it's a very complicated subject. And I just think sometimes that I'm just on the path that I'm supposed to be on. And I trust that God is directing me on that path. And wherever I'm supposed to go, I will end up there regardless. Well, that's your advice to your, because I hope that young women are watching that. So your advice would be to trust yourself, trust your instincts, trust your instincts. Camille, Mm -hmm. you're not so old. (laughs) <laughs> so I don't know if that's an appropriate question for you, but um, what would you tell your younger self if you could go back and tell your younger self? Well, I think it, it's age doesn't really matter only because there's people who have gone through what people go through in a lifetime and have 
my lifespan. This kid's going through way more than I've gone through. And I've gone through more things than people older than me have. So I feel like it is a good question because for me, I think about it all the time because I remember someone did ask that question before and I had to think about it. I was like, what would I, you know? I do believe that if I did anything differently, um, that could change the course. But I also believe that sometimes, you know, God's going to put you wherever you're supposed to be, regardless of what avenue you take. So, um, but for me, I would, the only advice I would give is the same. It's just like, trust yourself, follow your instinct, and what you're doing is the right thing. Just keep going. Just don't give up. That's the only thing. Cause don't give up. When I, I feel like a lot of times I want to give up. You're tired. You're overwhelmed. There's a lot going on. You don't know what you want to do next. And you have to fight through that because at no point in time will your life be perfect. At no point in time will everything be going the right way, the way you planned it. They say make a plan if you want to make God laugh or something like that. Right, right. right. Yeah, no. Every plan I've ever had was like God's like, okay, girl. Okay. Good luck with that. <laughs> well, you guys have been fantastic guests. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate your accomplishments. I'm so honored to be able to have celebrating International Women's Month and have the two of you here to help promote International Women's Month and all the great thing that women are doing and contributing to our community. I love your natural hair products. I, I love natural hair. I love being a part of the natural hair community. And I love our women of color who are making a difference and getting out there and betting on yourself. Owning yes. your own business is not easy because if you don't show up, you don't make a living. That's true. Right. And we are doing that in numbers. So thank you for being guests of mine on the Kingdom Podcast. And I look forward to seeing everyone again next month. That's a wrap, everyone. Thank you for having us. <laughs> thank you for having us. Thank you.